Here are solutions to homework set number 7 for ECE 376. This homework set looks at student t-tests and data A converters. Now the first problem is to measure your reflex time. So in order to use a t-test, we need to collect some data. So let's have some fun. Let's measure my reflex time. So here's kind of the idea. Let's start with the answer, then get to the, to the program. I'm going to push RB0. That starts the game. Try again. That starts the game. Three to seven seconds later, the lights turn on on port A. I then press the button, and the top button is my reflex time. It took me 4.063 seconds to respond. To play the game again, I start it. Three to seven seconds later, the lights turn on. I then hit the button, and that's my time. If it's my best overall time, it shows up and so on. So how do I do that? Uh, well, here's the code that uh, I developed. A couple of ways to doing it. The heart of it is, I'm not using the serial port, so I don't really need that. This is leftover code from someone else. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't hurt. Uh, make port A output, port B input turn on the LCD display, and then right here, here's the main loop. I'm going to wait for you to hit RB0. So this is my button, RB0. Spin your wheels until you push the button. While the button's being pushed, count really, really fast, mod 400. When I release, delay is a random number between 0 and 399. To have a 3 to 7 second delay, Make that 3,000 milliseconds, that's 3 seconds, plus 400 times 10 is 4,000. This goes between 3,000 and 4,000, between 3 and 7 seconds. Uh, once I am done waiting that much time, I'll turn on the lights in port A, set my timer to zero, and then count. How long does it take me to press RB0? So I'm going to keep on looping. Every time I loop, I count and wait one millisecond, keep repeating. As soon as I hit the button, then whatever the time is, I kick out. I'll display the time. That's my reaction time. Send to the serial port to collect data and repeat. So I actually guess I do need that for the serial out. When I'm all said and done, the compiled code looks like this. Here's the size. It was 3136 bytes. Divide by two, that's how many lines of assembler. Uh, 1,568 lines of assembly. 4.8% of the processor, saying the pick we can use, we're using, can actually do a whole lot more. Once you have your program running, now collect some data. And actually, before I collect some data, I want to verify that it really is measuring time in milliseconds. So what I'm going to do is do some known times. When the light turns on, one, two, three, four, five. That should be five seconds. Let's try it for 10 seconds, see if that works. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, pretty close. So it looks like my timer is good. Another way to do that is toggle a pin, like port C pin 0. Connect that to a speaker, and what I should see is a 500 hertz square wave. One millisecond on, one millisecond off. If that's 500 hertz dead on, I know my loop is one millisecond. If it's off, then I know my timing is slightly off. That's one way to measure timing. Once I've got my program working, I can now collect some data. So when I ran it, here's the data points that I got. Using a t-test. A t-test assumes all data is normally distributed, which isn't exactly true. I'm never going to have a negative time, but going with it, calling that a normal distribution, I need to find the mean standard deviation in MATLAB. Just copy and paste the data into MATLAB, find the mean. The mean is 215 milliseconds. The standard deviation is 24 milliseconds. 
with plus one, plus two standard deviations. So that's what, what my distribution looks like. I can plot that more accurately in MATLAB. So let's go from minus four to plus four standard deviations. The normalized probability is e to the minus s squared over two. Plot my standard deviations scaled by the actual standard deviations, shifted by the mean, times a thousand to make the units in milliseconds. Here's my reaction time. Now we can start analyzing it. To analyze it, I use t-test. If I want to find the 90% confidence interval, I've got a stat track. I've got five data points, meaning four degrees of freedom. 5% tails with four degrees of freedom. The t-score is 2.13. So we need to go left and right, 2.13 standard deviations. So that tells me the 90% confidence interval is between 163 and 266 milliseconds. That's a two-sided t-test. A one-sided t-test. If I were to play this game one more time, what's the chance my reflex would be less than 200 milliseconds? That's a t-test. Here's my distribution. Here's the mean. I want to find out how far is 200 milliseconds from the mean in terms of standard deviations. That's your t-score. So it's this far from the mean in terms of standard deviations. My t-score is 0.63. Going to stat track, I've got four degrees of freedom, t-score of 0.63. What's the probability? Probability is 28%. So this area is 28%. All probabilities add to one. So this area is 72%. 72% of the time, I'll have a reaction time bigger than 200 milliseconds, 28% less than that. And I can kind of check that. Let's go back again. So we'll start the test. One seventy four. I beat it. Ooh. Okay. So I can do it. Based on the data, it should happen twenty eight percent of the time. Now calculate the probability that your average reflex is less than two hundred milliseconds. Now, this is a population rather than individual. With populations, as I sample more and more, I'm more and more certain what my average reflex time is. If I had a thousand data points, I'd be really certain what my average reflex time is. So this gets tighter and tighter as sample size goes up. It actually goes in as the square root of n. So for populations, the standard deviation drops by the square root of n, or my t-score increases by the square root of n. For populations, my t-score is now 1.4. So this is 1.4 standard deviations away from the mean in the dark blue line. From StatTrek, 1.4 standard deviations with four degrees of freedom corresponds to a probability of 11%. There's only 11% chance that my actual reflex time is less than 200 milliseconds. 89% chance it's not. And it's not a 100% chance, just because it's possible when I collect the data, I just happen to get five bad samples. Um, not likely, but it could be. So again, this isn't going to be 100. That's not going to be zero. There is a chance that I got unlucky during my testing. Problem four is a two-sided test. Uh, find somebody else to take their reflexes. What I did is connect a speaker up to my board, and instead of looking at light, Listen to sound. Is my reflex time better to sound or than it is to light? And that's kind of what you could do for your term project as well. Ask a question, design an experiment built around your PIP processor to answer that question. Here the question would be, is my reflex to sound better than it is to light? So here's kind of the idea. I've got a speaker tied to port A or port C pin one. When the light comes on, I play a sound. And I want to know, is my reaction time to sound better than it was to light? So if I close my eyes, I got 0 0.215, 0 0.143. I can get my reaction time to sound. So again, same code as before, but now 
really all I did. Is back in my code, wherever it is, right here. I just said RC0 is not RC0. That's a not. So as I'm spinning through here, I'm also playing the speaker, playing 500 hertz. Collecting some data. So somewhere I've got data. There's my data. So this is my reaction time to sound rather than light. If I have my two populations, you know, here's light, here's sound. Each one has a mean, each one has a standard deviation. If I form a new variable, w is a minus b. The mean of w is just the mean of a minus mean of b. The standard deviation of w, this is for an individual, just one trial, is this, the variance of a plus the variance of b. And the variance is the standard deviation squared, or you can use variance in MATLAB. That's also a function. The t-score is how far is 0 from the mean. So a minus b is about the normal distribution. The mean is 0 0.06. Here is 0. A special but 0 is over here, a is greater than b. Over here, a is less than b. So this is b's got the better reflex time, a's got the better reflex time. What's the chance that a's that my reaction time to sound is better than A. How far away is that? That's my T-score. My T-score is 1.93. From StatTrack, that says that 93.72% of the time, or likelihood, that my reaction time to light is worse. 6.28% uh, chance that my reaction time to sound is worse. So apparently I react to sound better than light, which I didn't know before. And here's kind of what it looks like. So this is my reaction time to light. Here's my reaction time to sound based upon that small data set. If I have an individual uh, run, I could get a lousy sound reaction and a good light reaction. So A could be B. For populations, there is an average for sound. There is an average for light. I don't really know which one's better, but based upon this data, it's pretty likely that sound's got a better reaction time than light. And I can calculate that with a t-test. Problem five is turn your pick board into a square root function. So I've got a voltage coming in, x, goes 0 to 5 volts. The output is y. y is the square root of x. Come up with a program that does that. So here's what it should look like. Here's the input voltage right here, 2.32 volts. Find the square root, 1.543. And here's the voltage going out. As I increase the input voltage at 4.88, this is the square root of 4.88. Uh, where's 2 volts? Let's do 4. 4 has four, got a nice round number. So here's 4 volts. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 2 is 1.414 ish. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 0.23 is 0.54. How do you do that? Well, what I do is kind of go back over here. I've got the D to A converter connected to the PIC and the analog input. The analog input measures voltage between 0 and 5 volts coming in. This computes the square root and puts it out to the D to A. So the resulting code is this large, 6.6 .6 kilobytes, 3,300 lines of assembly. The heart of the code is right here. I'm going to read the analog input. That's 0 to 1023. This is a 10-bit A to D. Converting to voltage, x is a float, y is a float. Uh, I measured it 
um, my power on my pick board is actually 4.89 volts. It's not 5 volts. That's where this comes from. The voltage then is this percentage at full scale, a to d over 1023 times 4.89. I've got these dots in here to force it to be floating point operations. Y is the square root of x. This comes from math.h. So you have to include math.h for this to work. Then I do the d to 8. Um, this goes from 0 to 4095. So full scale is 4.89 volts on my board, it's supposed to be 5 volts. Is the, this percentage of full scale, that percentage of 4,095, send that to the D to A and repeat. And what you get is the D to A output is the square root of X. Why is the square root of X? So trying it, here's my voltages coming in. This is what it output. Here's what it should be. Take the actual square root of X. The error is the difference in the two what it should be versus what it actually is. And all my data is slightly biased high. So when I find the mean, the mean isn't zero. On average, I'm high, 16 millivolts. The standard deviation is 5.4 millivolts. I've got three, four, five, six, seven, seven degrees of freedom, or seven samples, meaning six degrees of freedom. For my t-test, 5% tails with six degrees of freedom is 1.94. If I go to the mean, plus or minus 1.94 standard deviations. This says my readings should be accurate to somewhere within plus five to plus 26 millivolts. And that is homework set number seven.